We all know, some of my generation who are here today would know that Sri Lanka underwent three armed struggles, three armed campaigns, one in 1971, and then again, second insurrection between uh, 1987 and 89, and then long war in the north for 30 years. So first two insurrections were mainly confined to the south, singly south. So um, the long 30-year war was confined to the north. It was brutally gunned down, brutally um, um, stopped by the government forces. And they actually, um, ATD was uh, defeated in 1989 and with large number of casualties. Uh, in these three struggles, all three armed struggles, I was personally affected. Uh, in 1931, I was uh, taken into custody and I was uh, kept in prison until 1975. So then I resumed my education again and then 80, 1985 I had to leave my academic job in the university and I had to go underground. I, I went into hiding. So I was in hiding for um, uh, five years again. And then in 1989, uh, my wife was uh, in Jaffna with, uh, with our two daughters. She was uh, gunned down by the Tamil Tigers. She was gunned down just because she was critical of them. So you can understand the active, what it meant to be, meant to be activist in Sri Lanka. In 1971, same thing happened in the South. If you are critical of them, they will gun down you and without any mercy. There's no uh, right to justice. And 89, 87, 89, during that period, then again, armed groups took the law into their hands and they gunned down people just because they criticized you. And I was one of them who was criticizing them. That's why I had to go underground. So, uh, in Jaffna, LTT um, killed all the people who were critical of them. This is done by the armed groups. And then the government, government also started killing uh, in 71. They brutally um, suppressed the insurrection. And 1897, armed groups killing youth and abducting them. And same thing mirrored in Jaffna. Between 89 to 87, government was very brutal. Very brutal because then again they were Tamils. They had a reason to be brutal. Um, some of you here, uh, you are here, would not agree with my opinions, but this is what I have to say. This is what I am, I would like to, I wish to tell you. In Sri Lanka, if you belong to a different race or different religion, then you are discriminated against. Now, when we received independence in 1948, uh, Westminster model 
was introduced to Sri Lanka. It was introduced without any accommodation to ethnic minorities. And we were not prepared, Sri Lanka was not prepared to deal with what would come for. And they did not know how to resolve all, all these issues. Not only that, 1948, Sri Lankan government um, introduced three pieces of legislation that restricted the votes and citizenship voting rights and citizenship rights to uh, majority of Tamils in, in the up country, hill country Tamils they are called. And when the, when the JUP started their insurrection in 1971, up country Tamils or northern uh, um, East, Eastern region Tamils were not participated in that insurrection. You can see the divide. Still, being a revolutionary organization, they excluded Tamils. And even 1987 to 89, again, the JP did the same thing. When there was a, a solution to resolve the ethnic crisis, because there was an understanding between India and Sri Lanka to resolve the issue, and they introduced some reforms. But JP was against those kind of reforms. And they started killing people who supported this, uh, um, this uh, reform process. So that is how. Where did they start? Where did they start here? Why did they start this kind of killing? At, actually, this came from the majority uh, Westminster model because they introduced these divisions. They, can, they used, actually, uh, cultural differences as the basis of uh, representation. And it continued even after our independence. It continued uh, dividing people. So this is how it started, and then uh, 89 to 87 to 89 insurrection in the south, and then Tamil insurrection. And actually, what they asked for? They asked for democratic rights. And Sri Lankan government thought, rather than giving democratic rights, it would be better to suppress them. And they did that. They did that, and uh, actually, after the war, when they were defeated, when tigers were defeated, there were some conditions. Those are the conditions now the Sri Lankan government is presenting the Tamil community. And there is no reform process, there is no reform. The Sri Lankan government or Sri Lankan parties, even left parties, are not supporting the Tamil cause. This is the situation in Sri Lanka, and with all this, our project for democratic project is under severe threat now. There is no hope for democracy even in coming years when you can see the uh, forces that would be coming into power. Things would be rather difficult again. And after Tamil Tigers were defeated, still there are problems of uh, land because army took away their lands and homes. And there are single mother households, single mother household, uh, mother-headed household, they are called, about 60,000 without any financial help. And people who have been abducted during uh, the war, government is not saying what happened to them. And they are not having the death certificates even because government is reluctant to admit. So the situation in the North is much worse than before the war. Then what would happen? Now in the 70s, I was living in Jaffna. Mid 70s, if anyone thought that there would be a struggle in Jaffna for their rights, they would have laughed because 
outwardly you never knew that it would be there would be a struggle but within Japanese society there was ferment it was it was coming up and in uh, those days the Tamil Tigers had Indian rear guard they had Indian support today there is no support from India so you would say oh well there won't be a war now because India is not there anymore but you can see there's a regional conflict now you can see things are now uh, getting hot in Jaffna as well because it, it is not the economic situation that would uh, inflame a war it is lack of their rights their political rights this is the most important thing our government is not understanding and if they think that there won't be a war again they will be mistaken because it is it is the political situation that would give rise to that kind of uh, war and if Jaffna people are not given their rights their legal rights as citizens as equal citizens and their difficulties they have had after the war during the war and after the war it will be very difficult to avert a situation without any kind of solution um, so it's the duty of the government or any political party in Sri Lanka to give Tamil people their due rights their rights to uh, be equal citizens if they are not given these kind of rights you cannot take things for granted it, is, it will be so hard uh, to avoid the political uh, um, situation to control um, even though uh, Tamil community has started asking for their rights these forces are not going to listen to them this is the sad situation and even the left parties uh, capitalist parties all these parties are not going to listen to uh, um, Tamil community if you are going to annex a community or region without their consent still there's a problem that problem has to be resolved without resolving that kind of issues you are unable to control the political situation I, I think my time is almost finished and um, if you as I mentioned before if you want to uh, read the bigger version of my talk please uh, visit those websites beyond views and term telegraph and I am thankful to you for your patience for listening to me and thank you very much <laughs>